The listening test is about 50 minutes. There are six parts in listening test. You will have about six minutes to listen to each passage and answer the questions. The passage will be played once. Part 1, Listening to Problem Solving. Instructions. You will hear a single conversation in three sections. You will hear each section only once. After each section, you will hear two or three questions. You will hear the questions only once. You will have to choose the best answer to each question. Total time for this task is around five minutes. You will get total eight questions for this task. Hello. How can I assist you today? Hi there. I am looking for a new phone, but I am not sure which one to get. Well, we have a wide range of phones. Could you tell me what you are looking for in a phone? Sure. I want a phone with a good camera and a long-lasting battery. I also want it to be reasonably priced. Great. We have a few options that may meet your needs. Have you considered the iPhone SE or the Samsung Galaxy A52? I have heard about both, but I am not sure which one is better. Can you tell me more about them? Certainly. The iPhone SE has a great camera and a long battery life, plus it's compatible with the latest iOS updates. The Samsung Galaxy A52 also has a great camera and a longer-lasting battery, plus it's more affordable than the iPhone SE. That's helpful. What about the storage capacity? The iPhone SE comes in two storage capacities, 64GB and 128GB. The Samsung Galaxy A52 comes with 128GB of storage, but you can expand it up to 1TB with a microSD card. Okay, that's good to know. Do you have any deals or discounts on these phones? Yes, we currently have a promotion where you can get a free pair of wireless earbuds with either phone. Additionally, we offer financing options if you would like to pay for the phone in installments. That sounds great. I think I'll go with the Samsung Galaxy A52. Can you please help me with the paperwork? Of course, let me grab the necessary forms for you to fill out. What features does the customer want in their new phone? What storage capacity options are available for the iPhone SE? What promotion is currently available for customers purchasing either the iPhone SE or Samsung Galaxy A52? You will hear the second section of the conversation shortly. All right, here are the forms. I'll need some basic information from you, such as your name, address, and phone number. And since you mentioned financing, I'll also need some financial information from you. Sure, I'll fill that out for you. Is there anything else I need to know before I make the purchase? Yes, we also offer phone insurance for an additional fee. It covers accidental damage, theft, and loss of the phone. It's a great way to protect your investment in case anything happens to your phone. That's a good idea. Can you give me more information about the insurance policy? Of course. It's an additional monthly fee, and the cost depends on the phone model and the coverage choose. We work with a reputable insurance provider, and they offer quick and easy claims processing in case you need to file a claim. Okay, that sounds good. I'll consider it. How long does it take for the phone to be ready? 
It usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes for us to set up the phone for you. We'll transfer any data you want from your old phone to the new one, and we'll also install any apps or updates you need. After that, you'll be good to go. Great. Thank you so much for your help. I'm really excited to try out my new phone. You're welcome. It was my pleasure to assist you. If you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to contact us. Enjoy your new phone. What is the additional service offered by the shopkeeper? Which of the following is not required for the forms to be filled out? How long does it take for the shopkeeper to set up the phone? You will hear the third section of the conversation shortly. Can you show me some phone cases and screen protectors for the Samsung Galaxy A52? Absolutely. We have a variety of phone cases and screen protectors for the Samsung Galaxy A52. Here are some options for you to look at. I like this clear case and tempered glass screen protector. How much do they cost? The clear case costs $20 and the tempered glass screen protector costs $15. They are both high quality and will provide excellent protection for your phone. That sounds reasonable. I'll take them both. Great choice. I'll ring those up for you. Would you like me to install the screen protector for you? Yes, please. I'm not very good at putting them on myself. No problem, I'll take care of it for you. It'll only take a few minutes. There you go, all set. Your phone is now protected and ready to use. Thank you so much. This has been a really great shopping experience. You're welcome, it was my pleasure to help you. Is there anything else I can assist you with? No, I think that's it. I'm all set for now. Thanks again for your help. You're welcome. Have a great day, and enjoy your new phone and accessories. Don't hesitate to come back if you need anything in the future. What was the customer looking for? How much does the clear case cost?
Part 2, Listening to a Daily Conversation Instructions. You will hear a conversation followed by five questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hi Bob, it's great to see you. Hey Alice, always a pleasure. How's everything going? Not too bad, just keeping busy with work and trying to stay active. What about you? Same here, trying to stay active and make progress on some projects at work. It's been a busy few weeks. Weeks. Yeah, I hear you. How's your family doing? I haven't seen them in a while. They're doing well, thanks for asking. My kids are growing up so fast, it's hard to keep up sometimes. I know the feeling. Speaking of family, I'm planning a trip to see my parents next month. They're getting older, so I want sure I see them as often as possible. That's a great idea. How far away do they live? They're in another state, so it's a bit of a trip. But it's worth it to see them. Definitely. I'm sure they'll appreciate the visit. So, have you heard about the new restaurant that just opened up downtown? No, I haven't. What kind do they serve? It's a Mexican restaurant. I've heard great things about their tacos and margaritas. Sounds delicious. Maybe we can check it out together sometime? That would be great. How about next Friday? I have the day off work. Perfect. I'll mark it on my calendar. Do you want to meet there, or should I pick you up? Let's meet there. It's easier for me to get there on my own. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. So, did you hear about the new project that our boss assigned to us? No, I haven't. What's it about? It's a big project for a new client. We're going to be working on a new website design for them. Oh wow, that sounds like a big job. When do we need to have it finished by? The deadline is in two months, so we'll have to get started right away. Okay, I'm up for the challenge. Do you have any ideas for the design? I was thinking we could go for a clean, modern look. Maybe incorporate some animation and interactive features. That sounds great. Let's brainstorm some more ideas and get started on the project plan. Sounds good to me. I'm excited to get started. Same here. Well, I hate to cut our conversation short, but I have to get back to work. No problem, I understand. It was great catching up with you, Bob. You too, Alice. Let's definitely plan on that Mexican restaurant next Friday. Absolutely. Have a good rest of your day. You too. See you soon. Bye. Bye. What does Alice plan to do next month? What is Bob's opinion about the new restaurant Alice mentioned? What project has their boss assigned to Alice and Bob? When is the deadline for the project assigned by their boss?
What type of design is Alice considering for the website project? Part 3, Listening for Information Instructions, you will hear a conversation followed by six questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hi there, how's your day going? It's been pretty busy. I had a lot of work to do at the office today. How about you? Not too bad, thanks for asking. I was able to catch up on some emails this morning and then had a meeting in the afternoon. That sounds productive. How did the meeting go? It went well. We discussed some new marketing strategies and brainstormed some ideas for our upcoming campaign. That sounds interesting. What kind of ideas did you come up with? Well, one idea was to create a social media contest where customers can post photos of themselves using our product and the best photo wins a prize. Another idea was to partner with a local charity and donate a portion of our sales to them. Those both sound like great ideas. Which one do you think would be more effective? It's hard to say at this point. We'll need to do some research and see which one resonates more with our customers. That makes sense. Have you started any of the research yet? Yes, I've been looking at some, some case studies of other companies who have done similar campaigns and I've also been surveying our customers to see what they think. That sounds like a good approach. What have you learned so far from the surveys? Well, we're still compiling the data, but so far it seems like our customers are more interested in the social media contest idea. Interesting. I think that could be a really fun way to engage with customers and get some user-generated content. Definitely. And it could also help us reach new customers who might not have heard of us before. Have you thought about what kind of prize you'll offer for the contest? We're still deciding on that. It will probably be something related to our product, like a gift card or a free sample pack. Makes sense. Well, it sounds like you're on the right track. Keep me updated on how everything goes. Will do. Thanks for listening to me ramble on about work stuff. No problem. I always like hearing about what you're working on. What was the main focus of the meeting mentioned in the conversation? What is the proposed idea for the social media contest mentioned in the conversation? What is the proposed idea for partnering with a local charity?
Which of the following best describes the potential benefit of the social media contest? What did the survey results suggest about customers' preference for the social media contest idea? What is the proposed prize for the social media contest? Part 4, Listening to a News Item Instructions, you will hear a news item once. It is about 1.5 minutes long. Then five questions will appear. Choose the best way to complete each statement from the drop-down menu. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I stand before you today to discuss a news story that has been making headlines across the globe. The story I am referring to is the recent announcement by the World Health Organization, WHO, that the COVID-19 pandemic has entered a new and dangerous phase. As many of you may already know, COVID-19 has been a global health crisis since it first emerged in late 2019. Despite the heroic efforts of healthcare workers and scientists around the world, the virus has continued to spread, causing untold suffering and loss of life. In recent weeks, the situation has grown even more dire. The WHO has announced that COVID-19 has now entered a new phase, with the emergence of new variants that are more infectious and potentially more deadly than the original strain. The organization has warned that the world must be prepared for a surge in cases and deaths, and that the pandemic is far from over. This news should be a wake-up call to all of us. It is time to recognize that COVID-19 is not going away anytime soon and that we must redouble our efforts to stop its spread. This means continuing to practice social distancing, wearing masks, and washing our hands regularly. It also means ramping up our efforts to vaccinate as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. While some may be tempted to let down their guard in the face of this news, we cannot afford to do so. We must remain vigilant and continue to take the necessary precautions to protect ourselves and those around us. At the same time, we must also recognize that COVID-19 has highlighted many of the structural inequalities and weaknesses in our societies. The pandemic has disproportionately affected marginalized communities and has exposed the vulnerabilities of our healthcare systems and social safety nets. As we continue to confront this crisis, we must also work to build a more just and equitable society. This means investing in our healthcare systems and making sure that everyone has access to quality healthcare regardless of their income or background. It means ensuring that essential workers, who have been on the front lines of this pandemic, are treated with the respect and dignity they deserve. And it means working to address the root causes of the social and economic inequalities that have made this crisis so devastating for so many.
Part 5, Listening to a Discussion Instructions, you will listen to a two minutes video. Then eight questions appear. Choose the best way to answer each question. As news of Kobe Bryant's death spread, many people turned to social media to mm -hmm. share their sadness. And there is some kind of comfort in collective grieving, but there are also moments that need to be private. Daniel Fanfare, executive director at the Heinz Center for Spirituality and Prayer, is here to help us navigate the grieving process in our age of being online. And it can be difficult mm -hmm. to find that fair balance, so I'm glad you're here to talk about it. Yeah, one thing that we all have in common is that we were all healing from something else before this very bizarre tragedy happened. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to understand that the details of these stories as they as they emerge can help us to understand really information about what we are going through. Mm -hmm. It can also make us sometimes feel a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. When you're online after such a huge public figure like Kobe Bryant has died, it can feel overwhelming okay. seeing post after post after post. Do you think that it helps people to to be online and to to, to read you know multiple hundreds of posts, or do you think it's better for people to just stay off of it? So the hashtag girl dad has over two million posts and Elle Duncan, who's an anchor, fellow journalist of you all's yes. uh, company, uh, she was um, talking about her last encounter with Kobe and how he was so proud to be a father of girls mm -hmm. and how girl dad has now been this kind of, you know, uniting term around fathers who have daughters. And the girl dad hashtag posts are really encouraging. I will say though, it's still easy to go into a spiral and to just look at post and post and tribute after tribute and I would say that if you end up feeling sadder or less like you have support and you feel more alone, it's time to take a break. Sometimes it can be hard to do that because I think out of habit, we're just always grabbing our phone. Oh, That's yeah. what we, it's almost like our, our brain is trained to do that. But there are apps that can mm -hmm. actually help you kind of fight almost that mm -hmm. phone addiction. Mm -hmm. So understand that we're naturally curious about these things, sure. especially when we lose someone that has been introduced to us through our screens. However, the Forest app is a really neat app that helps you to spend some you know, curated time away mm -hmm. from your phone. And when I say curated, the app is kind of like a game and a digital babysitter at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so you can set a timer of how long you want to be away from your phone. And it incentivizes that by letting you grow an orchard of trees on your phone. And every time you break your commitment and you end your break early, you kill a tree. Oh, oh you don't want to do that. And so you end up um, <laughs> actually beginning to mm -hmm. kind of cultivate this natural space in your phone. And it also gives you time to actually go on your phone and do what you want before a, a limited time as well. So you can mm -hmm. say, okay, I'm going to goof off for an hour on my phone and it'll give you a buzz and say, okay, it's time to put it away mm. again. So it is a digital babysitter, but also kind of a little environmental kind of mm -hmm. angry birds vibe uh, too. You know what I mean? And sometimes we need that little nudge because if you sure. do realize how much you unlock your phone a day and spend time mm -hmm. on it, it will probably make you mad. I know it does for mm -hmm. me. Uh, so you also have resources yes. on your website for people who are grieving. So the Heinz Center is the space where we want people to use it as a resource to feel better mentally, to feel better emotionally, to feel better physically, and to cultivate a positive community mm -hmm. so that we can have the resources to answer life's big questions together. So we have a wellness resources page on our website, and that wellness resources page has a special note from me just about your focus as you grieve and some information about what you need, as well as an article that talks about nine reasons why it's okay to grieve celebrities' deaths. And then we have some podcasts and some interesting articles, and then just to make you smile, we have a link to baby Labrador puppy swimming for the first time. Oh, I love it. Hey, why Because we not? all need it. That's genius. Happy I dog video. Remind us again where we find that so information. So you go to www.hindcenter.org and then okay. slash wellness resources and it's right there in our toolbar when you click on the right hand side of our screen. Well, you just, you made us smile just talking about and it. So did. it sounds like a powerful tool. So yes. It's okay to grieve. It's okay mm -hmm. to be curious. It's also okay to watch puppies bathe in the river and swim mm -hmm. for the first time. Okay. And those are your lessons <laughs> in life on this Friday, everybody. Thank you so much for Thank coming in. Thank you all in. for having me back, and thanks for creating this platform for sure. people to feel better. Love your positive Appreciate vibes. It.
Part 6, Listening for Viewpoints. Instructions, you will hear a report once. It is about three minutes long. Then six questions will appear. Choose the best way to answer each question from the drop-down menu. As a speaker and advocate for mental health awareness, I believe that it is crucial for us as a society to prioritize the well-being of our minds just as much as we do our physical health. For far too long, mental illness has been stigmatized and brushed under the rug, resulting in countless individuals suffering in silence and not receiving the help they need. The reality is that mental health issues can affect anyone, regardless of age, gender, race, or socioeconomic status. And yet, there is still a pervasive belief that seeking help for mental health is a sign of weakness or that it makes someone crazy. This kind of thinking not only prevents individuals from seeking treatment, but it also perpetuates harmful stereotypes and creates barriers to meaningful progress in this field. One of the most important things we can do to combat this stigma is to have open and honest conversations about mental health. We need to create safe spaces where people can talk about their struggles without fear of judgment or ridicule. This means encouraging people to speak up when they are struggling, listening with empathy and understanding, and educating ourselves about mental health. Another key aspect of mental health awareness is breaking down the barriers to accessing care. Unfortunately, mental health care can be difficult to access and expensive for many individuals. It is essential that we advocate for policies and programs that make mental health care more accessible and affordable for everyone. This includes increasing funding for mental health research, improving insurance coverage for mental health services, and creating more, and creating more community-based resources. In addition, we need to recognize the intersections between mental health and other social issues such as poverty, systemic oppression, and trauma. Many individuals who struggle with mental health also face economic hardship, discrimination, and other forms of adversity they face. It is critical that we address these underlying issues if we hope to make real progress in promoting mental wellness. Of course, there is no one-size-fits-all solution to improving mental health. It will require a multifaceted approach that involves individuals, communities, and policymakers all work working together. But the first step is to start talking openly and honestly about mental health. By doing so, we can help reduce the stigma surrounding mental illness and create a more supportive and compassionate society for all. At the same time, it is important to recognize that mental health is not just an, not just an individual issue, but a societal one. We need to address the root causes of mental health issues, which are often linked to systemic issues such as poverty, racism, and discrimination. By addressing these underlying factors, we can create a more equitable society that prioritizes the well-being of all others. So, I believe that mental health awareness is one of the most pressing issues facing our society today. We cannot afford to ignore the impact of mental illness on individuals, families, and communities. We need to work together to reduce the stigma surrounding mental health, increase access to care, and address the root causes of mental health issues. By doing so, we can create a more compassionate, equitable, and resilient society for all.